So welcome to part two of the Facebook Friday Q&A. If you missed part one, make sure you click here um, and watch it after you watch part two. Um, and then also, if you haven't seen this week's Raw review, I will put that right here. So you can click on that and watch that as well. Let's get started with part two of this Q&A, though. Muhammad Hatem asks, what would your reaction be if the WWE introduced Jeff Jarrett into the WWE Hall of Fame? Next question, Charlie Randall Kelly, if you were to pick three different women in wrestling past or present, who has the nicest boobs, the best ass, and the hottest legs? Um, nicest tits would have to go to Trish Stratus, best ass, I could also award that to Trish Stratus, but I'll go into the modern times and I will go with Naomi and hottest legs would probably have to be Stacy Keebler. I'll give her credit where credit's due. Not my flavor, but she had those tall drink of water legs. Austin Rollins is John Cena statistically better than Hogan Austin and The Rock because he has more title reigns, longer tenure on top, main event and more pay-per-views, put over more people and had better feuds. Clearly a Cena us address this shit right now, Mr. Austin Rollins. If you believe that John Cena has had better feuds than Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and or The Rock, you were delusional, okay? As far as the putting over more people, let's not go there, okay? And as far as the statistics go, Let's not talk about the money drawn. Let's not talk about the venue seen as main evented and headlined at where they drew half or three quarters audience. Let's not talk about that, okay? Just no. No! Brian Simons. Do you think it would be a good idea to have an NXT title match for the pre-show of Mania between Zayn and Owens, for example? Yes. Yes, I would almost advocate and argue for putting it on the main show as that opening match. But, if nothing else, on the pre-show, that should be the match. The NXT title must be defended on the pre-show, in my opinion. That's a great way to kick off the evening at WrestleMania 31, I feel. And it's a great way to test out, too, with these guys, how they perform in a venue with such an audience. And it's a way to test them on your biggest stage of the year. And at the same point in time, <clears throat> if you put them on the pre-show, you wouldn't have to worry about it being part of the actual WrestleMania event. You know, something you kind of wipe away if you wanted to, if you needed to. But why would you not do that? I think the NXT should be, title should be defended at each of the big four pay-per-views, either on the actual show itself or, at worst, on the pre-show. I think that brand, that belt, those performers need that exposure. And in part, NXT is about developing them and getting them ready for the main roster. Well, what's the only way you're going to find out if they're ready for the main roster is to give them a shot at the main roster. And here's a chance to safely give them a shot at the main roster and see what they could do, see how they react, see how the fans get behind them. I think it would work tremendously well, and I'm all for it. All right, let's see here. Zaire Brown, how and who would you have Rollins cash in on? I mean, you have a lot of different possibilities. You know, at this point in time, I'm not even sure I'd have him cash in. I might have him win straight up clean on Sunday at the Rumble. Uh, but if I didn't, I'd still have him cash in either at the Rumble or at WrestleMania. I don't want to waste it on Raw. I want it to be at one of the pay-per-views. I want it to be somewhere between Rumble and WrestleMania, meaning one of those two shows. I'd really prefer to do it at WrestleMania 31 if I'm going to do it. That's what I would do. Um, and then who would he have him cash in on? I mean, you could do Cena, you could do Lesnar, you could do Roman Reigns. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities on who you could have him cash in on. Uh, but that's what I would do. You know, you could have him cash in on Randy Orton, perhaps, at come WrestleMania time. There's a lot of different options for what you could do. Uh, Chris Wasson, should WWE pair Barrett and Regal make Regal the manager and trainer for Barrett since they both have been referred to as back alley brawlers. No, this sounds like some UK circle jerk uh, fun fantasy idea. No, Barrett can talk, so why would he need the manager? I don't really know where Regal would elevate him that much or bring anything different to the table, so I don't see where that would really work or make a lot of sense. 
Uh, Brian Simons also wants to know if Daniel Bryan does eventually turn heel, and I see it happening. Do you see JBL referring to him from then on out as a bad flank? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Robert Wyatt. Do you have highly arousing dreams of John Cena getting double arm DDT'd on stairs, or is it just me? It's probably just you. If you're dreaming about professional wrestling, you probably have some issues. You should seek some counseling. Hayden Pesci. Do you think that Roman Reigns will turn heel if he wins the Rumble since the majority want Goat Beard to win? I think it's a possibility, especially, again, if they're going to have Lesnar carry that title to Mania. There's a very distinct possibility that you would have to turn Roman Reigns heel because it seems like you fully went in on Brock Lesnar being a babyface for whatever fucking reason. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got? Xenia Barry. What do you think will be the big match at WrestleMania 32? Austin versus somebody or Taker versus somebody or just a WWE title match with Cena facing somebody on the roster? Honestly, based off of the three, I'd have to go Cena facing somebody on the roster. I mean, that's the safe money right there. Should have been either Austin Punk or Cena Taker, but more likely than not, we'll get neither one of those matches, and that's a shame. That's disappointing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Stuart Mileham, any thoughts on the Miss NWO contest from Sold Out 1997, and why did Bischoff choose to make out with her? Uh, why wouldn't he, I guess? It was his way to cheat and then hide behind the fact that it was just for television? I don't know. And not only don't really have any thoughts because I don't care. Uh, let's see here. Brandon Joyner, do you think the WWE is the most childish company so far, seeing how they take shots at their former employees and promos, mock people who pay for the pay-per-views, and completely sabotage their future by making former NXT stars look like idiots and or weak to the main roster guys? Yeah, there's a lot of childish elements there. I mean, a lot of things you can say about Vince. One thing I think you can say very accurately about him is he has a very childish streak to him. There's no question about it. I mean, there's just no question about that. Uh, let's see here. Cynthia Davidson, why do you frequently use the terms the drizzling shit, potentially bluest of blue fucks, at some point in time, wrestling business as a whole? Why do I use those terms frequently? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I would think ding dong dumb dicks would have been part of that too. <laughs> if you actually believe, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's others. And I'm sure you guys will fill me in on some of the other ones that I'm forgetting. I know I have a bunch of them. They're called uh, things that I'm known for. They're called my go-to phrases, I guess. And sometimes I don't even think about them. They just happen. So, uh, yeah, it's a good question. And then Cynthia Davidson also asked, if WWE offered you $5 million to induct Jeff Jarrett into the WWE Hall of Fame, would you take it? Uh, it's $5 million. Yeah, I would take it. I'd be the biggest Jeff Jarrett fan for one fucking weekend that I would ever imagine. I'd allow him to break a guitar over my head. I'd call him the Memphis hero and every fucking thing else for $5 million. Hell, I'd probably do it for $50,000. $5 million? And I'll say he's better than Hulk Hogan. Ah, oh, no, let's not be stupid about it. <laughs> that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's that's big. That's the Schleich Daddy's retirement plan right there. Yeah, I could fake it till I made it for one weekend to get that retirement plan. Go golf every day for the rest of my life and you know do whatever. <laughs> Too loyal does. Do you think Sable is Hall of Fame worthy? And if so, should she be inducted this year? Um. Yeah, I guess. I mean, again, they put Sonny in, so why can't they put Sable in? Uh, and should she be inducted this year? Yeah, I guess it could work. Why not? While well, you still have Brock in the company. Of Ever Harding, favorite WrestleMania behind WrestleMania 3 and 14. Personal favorite? A 7 would be one. I really like a lot about uh, WrestleMania 19. Um, so those would be two that stand out to me. WrestleMania 10 I thought was a really good show. So those would be some of the ones that I really liked. Um, Sergio Flores, do you think WWE will make a Mil Mascaras DVD? Uh, it's possible. Especially with the network now, it wouldn't surprise me if they did something like that. Um, Mario, the King of Hearts, Alcime. Will there be co-Royal Rumble, Rumbles winners at the end of this Sunday's Royal Rumble match? Again, it's possible with Ambrose and Reigns in particular. I wouldn't rule it out. 
I mean, I hate to see him go down that route, but it's possible. Uh, Benedict Infinity Ward, is it bad luck for Vince to say to his colleagues, break a leg? <laughs> when it's Sid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Drew Johnston, would the Miz and Damian Mizdow be good as the number one and two entrance in the Rumble? Yeah, you, you could do that. You could do that. It could work. It really could work. Um, let's see here. Henrique Marto, what's your opinion on Evan Bourne, and do you think he had potential to be a big star? He had potential to at least matter a little bit more than he did. You know, but then he also went and did some D-bag things, too, so he didn't deserve to be. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Luke Wynn Staley, how much longer do you think you'll stay active on YouTube for? For this foreseeable future, I don't see any reason to stop. Uh, Michael Cohen, what was your first reaction when Rick Rude was on WWE and WCW on the same night? I thought it was fucking bizarro world. But then I remembered that Raw was taped and Nitro was live. So I thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> uh, Alex Panayides. If he's not winning the Rumble and main eventing WrestleMania, what do you see Daniel Bryan doing for WrestleMania 31? I don't have a fucking clue. I really, truly don't know. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. If Sheamus was back in time for WrestleMania, would they do him against Sheamus? That's all I could think of at this point. Uh, Alberto Torres, what manager do you see going into the WWE Hall of Fame this year? I would hope it would be the Slickster. Uh, let's see here. What other manager am I forgetting? You could always go with somebody like a Gary Hart. I think he deserves his due. Uh, that's another one that stands out to me. You know, you could always go Jim Cornette from a managerial standpoint. Uh, I said, yeah, you know, so there are options out there. I don't know. I assume somebody will, but I'm not. I'm just not sure who. Um, let's see here. Shane Delane, if you could choose anybody to buy TNA and make them a viable alternative, who would it be? Probably Jim Ross. You know, at least being the figurehead of a group. I don't know if he'd have the financials to be able to get it done himself, but in terms of being the 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 head of the group and being the guy that would run the show, to me it would be Jim Ross. Uh, Ryan Nordge Nordgalen, excuse me, who are your top five Chicago Bears players of all time? Um, top five Chicago Bears players of all time, you're asking. Uh, you've probably got to go with number one is Walter Payton, obviously. Number two is Dick Buckus. Number three is Mike Singletary. Uh, number four is... Sid Luckman, and I've done this before. I'm trying to think of who I had at number five. Um, you know, it, it, it's such a fluid situation. A lot of people say Gale Sayers, and I can't really blame them there. You know, I might go with a Bronco Nagurski at number five. I might go with a Brian Urlacher at number five. I really think that the top four are lock, stock, and barrel set in place. And number five, I always vacillate back and forth between because there's so many Hall of Famers from over the years, honestly. So thanks to you guys again that submitted your questions for these Q&As today. I appreciate it. I'll be back Monday with another Twitter Q&A here on OTRS Central, a post-Royal Rumble edition. So let's make those questions all Royal Rumble related on Monday, shall we? All right, see you then. Actually, no, you'll see me before that. Check out the other content that will come on this channel this weekend, including the 2015 Royal Rumble review.